Tanzania's president, Samia Suluhu, has urged people to move away from flood-prone areas after climate-induced flooding displaced thousands in several districts. However, people living in affected areas have told the BBC that they have nowhere to go. Last weekend's downpour caused destruction in neighborhoods built along rivers that lead into the ocean. Tanzania's meteorological agency has warned of heavy rains for the rest of the month. South Africa has also witnessed devastating floods in the KwaZulu-Natal province. More rainfall is expected in the coming days. Let's now speak to Hope Magidimisha Chipungu, who's a professor of town and regional planning at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Now she's joining me from Durban, South Africa. Hope, thank you so much for making time to speak with us. And I want to, to talk a bit about a pattern where we see flooding in certain cities across Africa. We see dense populations in those areas and authorities seemingly not following building codes. Talk to us about if that's a key contributor. Yes, uh, it is a, a key contributor, uh, and, and this is going to continue to be a problem because we don't seem to be addressing the, the, the problem. Oh, obviously, you did mention that we do have uh, our cities in, in Africa which are overly populated, and, and the way in which we're planning our cities is, is really concerning because they're not risk-informed uh, from a bank planning perspective, and uh, we are not able to accommodate everyone. So if we are not able to address those issues, then we will continue having floods and, and it's going to be, be a lot of disasters going, going forward. So here's what I imagine is particularly challenging, is making existing cities resilient with, you know, some of the realities of the times we live in whilst preparing for future shocks. Uh, how can governments quickly operate in that manner? Yeah, so there are quite a number of things that government should be doing. Um, we need to be designing cities which are, are, are risk informed, like I mentioned earlier on. But what does that really entail? It entails to be mindful of our space. So when we're designing our cities, we obviously have to leave some green spaces. We cannot just have uh, uh, concrete uh, all over because we do know what that does to, to the environment. But also we need to be also be mindful in terms of how do we pave our environment. We're talking about permeable uh, uh, surface here, a, a pavement in, in the way in which we design our cities. But also, mostly in the African continent, we need to also look at the what we call river channelization. And this is a situation where we try to expand some of our, our, our rivers, also to make sure that the water, when it comes in, in its volume, is able to, to, to distribute across uh, um, across the, the, the river and it also takes time to, to create an impact. You are delaying the impact but also give you time to prepare better. But also on top of that we also need to be mindful of what we call carbon sinks. Right, so these are mm -hmm. uh, 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 open spaces that we live uh, within within our urban environment to make sure that they absorb carbon dioxide and also to assist in regulating the temperature and of course the the, the carbon emission into our, into our spaces. And of course we cannot emphasize enough in terms of how we deal with the waste management. Because most of our drainage systems, if you drive around what you call African cities, especially downtown, they are actually blocked because of the way in which we are engaging with our environment, the way in which we are managing our waste management. So you find that there are a lot of plastics around. So those kind of issues need to be addressed and, and it has to be addressed now because we are running out of time. What can urban city planners and those in that sector do to design more resilient and construct more resilient homes? Yeah, so like I've mentioned earlier on some of the issues they need to do, um, they, they need to pay attention to how they're designing cities. Obviously, you have to design with people. And and, and most African cities will realize that they're not as advanced as the ones in, in, in Europe. So in mean, the way in which we design our cities, we need to be mindful of the people who are coming within the urban environment so that we're able to expand our infrastructure, but also build higher. So you are not just going to build cities which allow people to travel a lot and use their own cars all over because that also has a contribution towards a, a global warming. So you want to design cities uh, in the you know, with the people that are able to walk around, but also try to discourage people to build on the what we call flood plains. And this is what has seemed to be happening in Africa. And this is because uh, we, we are talking about the issues of land, but I'm not just talking about land here. I'm talking about access to strategically located land, which is more fertile land, but also land which you are able to access the economic activities. So we have limited of those because of the way in which we design our cities. And, and in the event where we do have land, it's very expensive and ordinary people are not able All to right. afford. So what we're supposed to look at is some of those issues. 
Uh, very, very insightful. Hope Magidimisha Chipungu, thank you so much for joining us on the program.